Assalamu alaikum and good evening everybody. On behalf of Genesis Online University, I welcome you to this clinical session. Uh, some of you may know me. I am, my name is Professor M. Mutin. At present, I am working as the head of the Department of Autolaryngology and Head Neck Surgery, so it's throughout the Medical College Hospital. Uh, today's clinical topics, anatomy, physiology of nose, and second part is clinical examination of nose. Uh, would you mind if I say uh, uh, or speak my lectures in English? Sometimes I will use some Bengali, but most of the time I usually use English uh, because your media of education is English. So that's why I prefer to speak uh, in English. So I think you don't mind that. Now, actually, I will discuss some important topics, which is very important for exam. Most of the topics I will discuss related to your exam so that you can pass your exam very easily. As you know, nose is, uh, ENT is one of the important part of your surgery exam. Uh, you know, surgery has got uh, part one and part two. Uh, part one is general surgery and part two is autolaryngology and eye. So and eye is, uh, ENT is very important topics because you will have separate exam day for your exam. That's why it is very important. Uh, I will just, uh, say a few words also how to proceed your written paper. Uh, when I will discuss about nose anatomy physiology, I will tell which is important for exam. So let us start with the anatomy of the nose. I will also draw some picture. Uh, I think you will like that because sometimes we ask these questions, draw and level some part of the nose. So we have to answer that as well. Even in the Bible board, we will ask this question, okay, draw and level nasal septum. So you have to know how to draw. Okay, so let us start with the anatomy of the nose. Now, as you know, look at my nose. Uh, the shape of the nose is a triangular shape. Look at this, like a pyramid. Uh, it has got some apex, which is attached with the forehead. And this is the base, which is perforated by, you know, the nostrils. So we divide the nose according to the anatomical point of view, uh, the external nose, that means which you can see from outside and inside the nose is the nasal cavity and this is the ala or vestibule. So if you think of the external nose, what are the structures or composition of the external nose? Look at this, look at my nose. Uh, the external nose is two part. One is a uh, bony part and this part is cartilage part or cartilaginous part. The bony part, as you know, there are two bones, very important the two nasal bones here, two nasal bones, and laterally, this is the orbit, this is the maxilla. So the frontal post of the maxilla is coming up, frontal post of the maxilla is going up. So the external nose, the bony part, composed of two nasal bones and frontal process of the maxilla. So that's it. Now, the lower part, usually is given the upper one third is bony and lower two third is Cartilaginous. Now the lower part consists of upper lateral cartilage here, and this part is lower lateral cartilage. The lower lateral cartilage, the lateral part is called lateral crust is called ala, and middle crust is just forming the column of the nose, which divide the nose into right and left. So this is the external nose. It has got some muscles, size compressor and the lateral muscles supply the facial nerve. The external nose, lymphatic drainage is periodicular and submandibular limb node. The nerve supply is your ophthalmic and maxillary nerve. So that is about the external nose. Now the most important part of your exam is inside the nasal cavity. The nasal cavity, if you go inside, it has got the midland part is septum, the lateral wall, the roof, the floor. Which is the most important part of your exam is nasal septum, and your lateral wall of the nose. Lateral of the nose is a bit complicated, but the septum is straightforward. If I say draw and label nasal septum, last time I put this question in the final professional MBBS exam under Dhaka University, many other students don't know how to draw nasal septum. It's very simple. So I would like to show you how to draw nasal septum. Uh, I think you can see this. Just uh, this is the forehead. And this is the nose. 
Okay, so look at this. Draw like this. This is the frontal sinus. This is this, and like this group. This is the spinal sinus. And draw this one just like this. So this is septum. Now, the septum. What are the part of the septum? From here, draw a line this one. And from here, draw like this one. So there's three major part of another septum, and there's some minor distribution like this. Now, can you see? This this way or? Uh, or they got the border or they got the uh, right, right, right. Okay, mm -hmm. so now how do I draw this one? Just this is the fore forehead, and then part the nose, and this is the oral cavity or uh, lips. Now, from here, just this is a frontal sinus, and go back like this and make a groove here. This is spinal sinus, and from here, like, make a line up to the soft palate, the uvula. Now, one from here to here, this part is the nasal cartilage. This is called quadrilateral cartilage, four sided border. And posterior superly is your PB, perpendicular plate of ethmoid bone, and down is your vomer. There are minor contribution in the floor, small contribution. If you don't know, it doesn't matter. Nasal crest of maxilla and nasal crest of palate and bones. So, this is the nasal septum. So nasal septum is formed mainly by the quadrilateral cartilage, anteriorly, posterior superiorly perpendicular plateau ethmoid bone, and posterior inferiorly is vomer. Minor contribution these and that doesn't matter, but only these three. Never forget this. Now, next sir, question is. Sir, border, border Okay. Now, next question is in the in the Bible board, we will ask this question. Okay, draw and label nasal septum and draw how does nasal septum get blood supply. Now, as you know, look at the how it get blood supply. So this one from here. This is called anterior ethmoid artery. From here, posterior ethmoid artery. From here, spinopalatine artery. From here, greater palatine artery. From here, superior level branch of the facial artery. They form a plexus here. This is called Kaiselbeck's plexus. So this plexus is formed but the entry ethmoid artery, the posterior ethmoid artery is easily doesn't contribute up to here, but is subtle supply of the septum. Spinopalatine artery from, from floor, greater palatine artery, and super level branch of the facial artery. So this is your blood supply of the nasal septum and forming a plexus, kaisulat plexus, which is the site of anterior epistaxis. There is another site of epistaxis from the branch of the spinopalatine artery, and this is the Woodruff's plexus. Woodruff's plexus. So but this is... Can you, can you see this now? Can you make this one? Sir, uh, uh, sir. Sir, 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 Okay, can I use back camera? Uh, yes, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Back camera. Yeah, no, back camera. Can we see now? Sir, yes, sir. Back camera is for the third How can I just see? It's okay now? Okay, now, sir. Okay. So, as you know, just so this is, as you know, this is the entreatment, posttreatment, spinopalatine, getapalatine, and superior balance of the facial artery. They form a plexus, kaiseblock plexus here, the enterocytoepistaxis, 
and there is another plexus here branch of the sphenoplatinar artery this is called woodruff's plexus so that is all about the nasal septum now next question is what about the lateral wall of the nose okay so the lateral of the nose is is a bit complicated because it is uneven surfaces uh, if i just draw a picture the triangular shape this is a nose okay this is the septum and this is the lateral wall this is the intra turbinate this is the middle turbinate this is the supra turbinate like in this side intra turbinate middle turbinate and supra turbinate so the lateral wall is irregular uh, it is convoluted by three turbinates intra turbinate middle turbinate and supra turbinate on both sides the part is septum here now the question is uh this turbinate has got inside is a bone bony part and this is called inferior concha middle concha and super concha they are covered by the mucous membrane forming the turbinate and they overhang a space here this is called cleft or meatus so the lateral wall has got super uh, inferior turbinate middle turbinate super turbinate inferior meatus middle meatus and super meatus now in the lateral wall important structures often into the meatus and that is important for your exam now what does it open in the intra meatus the intra meatus opens the naso naso lacrimal duct so naso lacrimal duct opens in the intra meatus the middle meatus is very complicated uh, here the mostly this sinus what is this sinus this is the maxillary sinus so maxillary sinus opens in the middle meatus now before that there is a thin plate of bone here attached from intra turbinate upward covering the middle meatal opening and this bone is called uncinate process that's why in endoscopic sinus surgery this is the first part we have to remove to see the opening of the maxillary sinus so this is uncinate process now here is another bulging you can see through the endoscope here and that bulging is your bulla epidalis and that is uh, the part of the entrethmoid group now in the middle meatus opens what are the sinuses opens into the middle meatus now in the middle meatus the maxillary sinus opens and also from above from above is, is the frontal sinus is coming up and also open to the middle meatus so entrethmoid groups frontal sinus and entrethmoid ear cells they open into the middle meatus if in this regard if we say we have there are another sinuses the group of sinuses is called paranasal sinuses we usually divide into anterior group and the posterior group the anterior group of paranasal sinuses consists of the maxillary sinus entry ethmoidal groups and frontal sinus they are drained into the middle meatus the supra meatus usually the posterior group of ethmoidal cells drain here and another sinus is sphenoid sinus which drains above the supra meatus here is the radius is called spheno ethmoid recess so sphenoid sinus opens into the spheno ethmoid recess but the supra meatus only the posterior ethmoidal cells directly open into it now in this regards regarding the lateral wall regarding the sinus is opening we put this in the mcq like middle meatus drains true and false like posterior ethmoidal cells true or false false sphenoid sinus is true or false false uh maxillary sinus is true frontal sinus is true so this is a question we put in mcq so that is the lateral wall of the nasal cavity it's very complicated but if you draw like this and it's very easy to understand now regarding the roof and floor usually we we don't ask this question in the exam we ask the question is septum and lateral wall of the nose and paranasal sinuses they are opening so we have paranasal sinuses groups enter group and posterior group enter group comprises of middle meatus enter ethmoidal cells and frontal sinus the posterior group uh, just uh, sphenoid sinus and posterior ethmoidal cells if you just in general sense the enter group drains into the middle meatus and the posterior group drains into the supra meatus that is all about the short anatomy which is important for your exam what are the paranasal sinuses as you know how the drain is you know now the next is 
Ah, esse é o que mais, mais se dá. Ok. Uh, can, you see, uh, can you see me now? Ok. So, yes, now what about the, what about the uh, osteometal complex? There is one question we put in MCQ. So, that is, uh, if we go to the, again, the osteometal complex. Uh, can you finish? I'll just show you how to, uh, what does it mean actually, osteometal complex. So again, draw a picture like this. Uh, this is the intra turbinate. This is the middle turbinate. Uh, this is the opening of the maxillary sinus. This is the uncinate process. Now, the osteometal complex, here I would like to say something about this area. This is the part, the complex part of the nasal cavity, lateral wall, which comprises the osteometal complex. So osteometal complex comprises of, why is this complex? Because this is the area where all the sinuses, mostly maxillary sinus opens here, the intraethmoidal cells opens here, the frontal sinuses opens here. So all are coming here in a very clear, narrow space. So this is the osteometal complex. So that's why it comprises of the maxillary ostium here, and then the middle matus, this part, the uncinate process, this part, and after here, when you uh, retract the middle turbinate medially, then you see the bulging like this, and that is bulla epidalis. And enter part of the middle matus, there's some small cells here, it's called agonizer cells, uh, infundibulum. So all these hiatus semilunaris, that means the middle matus posterior part where the maxillary sinus opens is called hiatus semilunaris. So all this part causes, uh, uh, com consists of osteo, osteometal, osteometal complex. And that is important when we do face endoscopic sinus surgery. This anatomy is, is very important when you do endoscopic sinus surgery for polyps or for sinusitis. Okay, so that's it. Uh, now, the physiology of nose. Okay, so now we ask this question in the exam. Tell me, also a short essay question paper, uh, what are the function of nose? Uh, if you just think of this, what the nose is doing. Now, the first one is respiration because we breathe through nose. Is it mandatory? The question is mandatory. Well, we usually breathe through nose, but if we have a blocked nose, then we, are, we can also breathe through the mouth. So we can breathe through mouth. So this is not mandatory, but this is very important function of the nose is, is respiration through the nose. Now why? Because it has got many function. Now, every day, about 10,000 liter air is ventilated through the nose to the lower respiratory tract. That means alveolar level for gas actions. Now, if we straight away breathe in the air from the outside, and that is passing to the alveolar uh, respiratory membrane for gas actions, so there is uh, lots of difficulties. The air has to be warmed in optimal temperature for easy gas actions. That's why, and that function is doing by nose. So the nose, function of nose, number one, is a passage for respiration. That means we can breathe, we are breathing through the nose, number one function. Number two function is uh, humidification of the inspired air. That is very important, humidification of the inspired air. That's why I'm saying that that air cannot be uh, going to the lungs for gas actions that has to be humidified in optimum temperature for gas sections. So humidification of the inspiratory air is another important function of, of nose. Number two, number three, in the nasal mucosa, in the nose, there is some secretion uh, which contains IgA. So that IgA can kill some inspired bacteria. Number three function, 
Number four function is, as you know, in the from outside air, lots of particulate matter is there, but that has to be filtered by the nose. That means the nose has got either secretion, IgA, as well as the lining, the hair, this is called PPC, that can filter the particulate matter. So the harmful objects or matter cannot go inside. So this is also number uh, important function of nose. And then uh, uh, resonance of voice is another important function. That means with nose, it ha we have a very good quality of sound or our speech. You can just close the nose. Uh, what is your name? So our voice has changed. So resonance of voice is important function of nose as well as parallel sinuses. Now, another important function of nose is olfaction. That means we are getting smell by the olfactory system inside the nose. And that is also a part of the anatomy, but usually don't ask this question that how the olfaction is coming from here, going to the brain for perception of smell. This is, we hardly ask this question. That's why I did not discuss, but olfaction is important function of nose. Now, uh, another function is uh, mucociliary activities. This is a very important function because the lining uh, respiratory system as well as the nose is ciliated columnar epithelium. Uh, the nose has got three types of epithelium inside the nose. One is commas epithelium lining the vestibule ala, and most of the nasal cavity or uh, is, is, is uh, covered by the ciliated columnar epithelium and upper part of the nose is a uh, olfactory neuroepithelium, but mostly ciliated columnar epithelium the sinus lining as well as nasal cavity lining. And what does it, it do? The ciliary activity, they drain the sinuses, they drain the separation of the sinuses, they drain, wash out from the lining epithelium of the sinuses down to the nasal cavity. And the, by the ciliary activity, the ciliary activity is the secretion mucus is transported from the nasal cavity towards the nasal pharynx and oropharynx. To lubricate the pharynx, to, to lubricate the pharynx, that's how we are talking. Now think of that. If the nose is blocked, the patient, those who have nasal obstruction, they have to breathe through the mouth. I think of that. The mouth is very dry. So if the dry mouth, because it's not lubricating by the nose, so we cannot even speak sometimes. Dry mouth, we cannot speak. The throat is, uh, is very dry, yet it destroys the quality of voice. So mucosolary activity is another important function of nose. The lastly, this is part of the external beauty. Why? As you know, the, those people, those who have a very beautiful nose, the, if a person wants to choose any, any, any uh, girls or even the girls want to choose any boys, they usually look at the face as well as the nose because those persons, those who have a very beautiful nose, they are more admirable as well as they are accepting that one. That's why in old days, uh, in the Egyptian uh, era, uh, era, like 15,000 BC or 1500 BC, uh, there are some persons punished by the emperor that they usually chop the nose. This is called rhinectomy. And eventually, if you want to punish somebody, if you want to mutilate somebody, they have to chop the nose and they disfigure the face. And that is the best punishment rather than imprisonment in those days. And from there, actually, the evolution of rhinoplasty came up. Uh, the Egyptian years, Dr. Papyrus, as well as uh, in India, Sushratra, uh, Sushrat they invented the rhinoplasty. So that's why this is also important function. Nose is a part of external beauty. What about the parallel sinuses? Does it help us? It's very mysterious, the function of parallel sinuses. We don't know actually what hell are they doing because there's really a headache. Uh, those who have a sinusitis, uh, we are feeling headache. So what hell of this, like our appendix? Does it work? So the function of the parallel sinus is, is still controversial, but still it gives uh, humidification of the inspiratory air because of lining epithelium and uh, area, uh, also resonance of voice. And there is some, it also reduce the weight of the skull if you float in the water, as well as uh, protection from the external injury. Suppose uh, this orbit and uh, the hypnotic sinus is here. So, and all the skull bones. So it also gives some like frontal ear. Be beside the skull bone is your frontal sinuses and behind that is your brain, frontal lobe. So if there's any trauma, 
the trauma is coming to the forehead, the uh, frontal bones, and then some breaking of the sinus, but very difficult to reach the frontal lobe. That's why in this way, actually it can have some protective function uh, of the parietal sinuses. So that is all about your know, short anatomy and physiology of nose. Now, in a nutshell, what did we learn today about the anatomy and physiology of nose? And what is important for exam? So for important uh, part of the exam is row and level nasal septum. Number one is formed by the quadrilateral cartilage and then pushed by the perpendicular ethmoid bone and the down is vomer. That's it. Now, how does it get blood supply? So blood supply is uh, intraethmoid, posterior artery, spinopalatine, and gatopalatine, and super level branch of the facial artery. They supply the nasal septum. Next question is, what are the lateral wall of the nose? Describe the lateral of the nose. It's a short essay question paper, and also some MCQ regarding the sinuses, how is they drain. So lateral wall has got uh, infraterminate, middle terminate, and super terminate. Infraterminate drains only one thing, is nasolacrimal duct. Middle meters drains the entire group of ethmoid air cells, maxillary sinus, frontal sinus, and entroethmoid air cells. The superometers drains the posterethmoid and above is your spinoid sinuses. So that is the uh, key, uh, key notes of this anatomy. What about physiology? The function of the nose. If you don't remember anything, two or three functions you have to remember. One is the passage for respiration, number two, humidification, and number three, olfaction. These three. If you don't forget all, or you don't remember all the other other uh, function of the nose, like uh, it, it filters the particular matter, it kills the insert bacteria, it transports mucus to the throat for lubrication of the throat, you know, external beautification. But three function is important. One is uh, respiration, and another is uh, humidification, and another is olfaction. So that is all about anatomy and physiology of the nose, and you will get some questions from for your written paper as well as for your viva questions. Now, next part of the uh, today's topic is examination of nose. Now, it's very difficult to uh, say a few words about the examination because uh, I think uh, I think it, I will discuss this one when I'll be in clinic uh, next uh, classes because ongoing actually I will take uh, classes. Uh, but still, I, I want to say a few words about that. Now, because this is your OSC examination, in your OSCE examination, you will be given uh, cases uh, from the nose. You will be given uh, septal deviation, DNS. Number two, you will get nasal polyps, either uh, ethmoidal polyps or anticonal polyps. And number three, sometimes you can give rhinosporodesis. But nowadays, we are getting very less number of rhinosporodesis cases. Uh, we were getting very uh, big number of cases when we are medical students because on those days, we have lots of rhinosporodesis cases. But nowadays, the people are very... Uh, you know, urbanization of the people as well as uh, they are uh, more fashionable. They don't uh, used to uh, take bath in ponds or rivers, infected river. That's why the incidence of transportation is drastically reduced nowadays. Uh, so let us start with the nose examination. Now, in the exam board, the OSCE is about 20 marks. You'll be given usually two cases. One is nose, another is throat or ear. Uh, Anyway, so how to examine nose? So uh, you'll be given one patient, okay? You will start your talking and examination. What you need uh, in ENT examination, you need a light source. We usually put a headlight or we have a bullseye lamp and head mirror. But nowadays we're giving very easy that we have to put on headlight. Uh, we don't need a bullseye lamp and reflecting the light from bullseye lamp towards your mirror and then passing through the hole to the patient's nose. In our days, it was a bit difficult. Many people uh, don't know how to put on the head mirror, but now we are giving head light. So directly you can focus to the patients. So the first thing is uh, you introduce yourself. Well, uh, assalamu alaikum. Uh, my name is Mr. Kurim. Uh, you speak in Bengali. Uh, I am a fifth year medical student. I would like to examine you. I am sure you will, I will not uh, hurt you or you will not get any pain. So this is the interaction yourself with the patient and take permission. Then position of the patient and yourself. Usually you sit face to face uh, and your legs will be closed, not apart like that. And your legs uh, will be uh, beside the patient's leg. Uh, and now I always 
prefer that you have two hands. So always support one hand to the patient's head. So that patient doesn't move like that. And patient not get any, any pain. Can you hear? It's okay now? Okay. Yeah, sir. Okay. So, uh, inspection of the external nose. Uh, you have uh, focus your light to the nose and see is there any external uh, deformity or any deviation of the external nose to right or left side? Is there any scar mark or anything here? So, this is your inspection of the external nose. Number one. Number two. Palpation. Number one inspection, number two, palpation. So palpation over the sinus area. That means the frontal sinus. This is the ethmoid sinuses here. And this is the maxillary sinuses. So palpation of the uh, palpation over the sinuses to see is there any tenderness or not. So this is number two point is palpation of the sternal sinuses to elicit any tenderness. Number two point. Number three. Before going to have a look to the nose, this is called anterior rhinoscopy, we usually perform two tests. Number one is nasal patency test to see the nasal air flow. How to do that? We usually prefer take a uh, metallic curve, tongue depressor like this, and as the patient close your mouth and breathe in and out over here. So place this one or the nostril here and breathe in and out. And when breathe out, you can just check the fork in the metallic tongue depressor. Who is the right side, left side? Don't move this one. So this is your left side, this right side. So just and then check this one, the fork. If the two sides fork is equal, then it's fine. If one side is, is absent or less, then it indicates this side is nasal obstruction on the left, left side or right side. So this is the nasal patency test by metallic tongue depressor. Just hold this here and breathe in and out like that. And check this fork. Very good way to see this nasal patency test, even in children, small child. Many of the examiner, they like the cotton wool. I don't like this. In England, I, we used to use this one. I also put in my book as well. So this is the test actually. But what about the cotton wool? If you used to use cotton wool, and you have to then press this one and breathe in and out and see the movement of the cotton wool. And then again, this side, breathe in and out, movement of the cotton wool. But the problem is, suppose the ceiling fan is, is moving in the, in the roof. The ceiling fan can also move your cotton wool. That's why we don't like that. And also, <clears throat> when you press this one, you can art artificially block this one and push the septum to the other side. So this is the problem actually with this cotton wool. That's why think of that. Always do this one with with metallic tongue depressor. Then check the fork. This is called nasal patency test or air flow test. Number four is smell test. So ask the patient, well, uh, I would like to put something in your nose. You will tell me, what is that? Are you getting any smell or not? So what thing is, ask the patient to close eyes. When the patient close eyes, then you <clears throat> test separately. Close this one and get the uh, put it in the perfume or piece of soap. Can you get any smell? No, sir. Okay. But close eyes. Then this side. Can you get any smell? Yes, sir. What is that? Uh, sorry, soap. What is that? Sorry, it's perfume. So what is your finding? So less side is, is uh, no smell or anosmic or less smell, hyposmic. And this side is normal. So this is smell test. <clears throat> Next is enterorhinoscopic examination. Now, enterorhinoscopic examination, before that, you have to pull this column off to see is there any patency, is there any ally uh, in the vegetable, is there any problem in the vegetable. So always, and also look at, when you do this one, if the patient has got anterior caudal dislocation, so that can come up. 
so you can notice this one and then with the traditional thodigam speculum i'll show you next classes uh, how to hold and then you support suppose we usually hold this one with the left hand so support the patient's head with the right hand like this and then use this one and also your headlight is there so focus the headlight and examination of the nasal cavity the line in mucosa the septum the infra terminate the middle terminate the middle meters is is normal or not or the septal deviation to the left side or right side is the terminate in any other side is hypertrophied or big is there any polyps or any unwanted things inside the nose that all you observe with the enteral anoscopic examination once you finish your enteral anoscopic examination then you ask the examiner sir i would like to do pns examination posterior anoscopic examination sometimes we don't uh, some okay this is very frightening and uh, the students are very uh, uh, not that good of uh, doing this pns because lots of patient has got gag reflex some pain that's why sometimes we don't do it but if it has got anteroconal polyp or anything so we we have to do this but is routine we have to do how to do pns examination or uh, posterior anoscopic space examination we have to uh, need a speed lamp or lighter or we need a pns mirror a curved shape pns mirror uh, usually uh, so this is uh, just uh, like this so this is the just like this angle and and here is the mirror okay so this is pns and you meet a uh, tongue depressor metallic tongue depressor pns mirror and your speed lamp or your any any lighter okay <clears throat> so uh now how to do this one first thing is you have to take the pns mirror and slightly warm this one to prevent fog with the lighter and then just a touch with the back of the hand and it is not too hot and then ask the and also explain with the patient what you are going to do then ask the patient to open mouth and depress the enter third of the tongue with your left hand and then pass this mirror uh, you see the evula along the evula towards the nasal pharynx and see is there anything what is that you can uh, see some polyps inside the posterior cona this is called anteroconal polyp you can see adenoid pad you can see any other lesions so what are the structures you will see with this pns examination that question is asked in the written paper as well as in the viva questions uh, or even in the short essay question paper i mean uh, in in your uh, osc examination we see like cross uh, ask this questions so in the posterior nasal cavity uh, you will get the posterior end of the septum you will get two opening it's called posterior cona in the roof you'll get adenoid pad you'll get the posterior border of the terminate and more laterally you will get a slit called fossa up uh, fossa up rosenmuller and if you see anteroconal polyp you can see the polyp is coming towards the coronal in the whitish polypoid mass or any nasal mass or any any uh, cancer in the nasal pharynx or any subtish mass you can see in the posterior cona once you finish this one then your exam is finished but sometimes in post graduate examination we ask this one open the mouth and try to see the cheek see the teeth because in case of cancer of the maxillary sinuses you can see loose tooth you can see some pain in the on percussion of the cheek and also go up and palpate the back of the neck for limb node metastasis in case of carcinoma maxillary and trauma or any sinusal cancer so this is for a post graduate not for you for you is pns is enough now is summarize your thing suppose this is a case of septal deviation to left side think of that left side septal deviation how to present this in your exam sir my case uh, uh, on on my no, uh, examination on the nose on inspection you don't tell directly the your diagnosis first first your findings then your diagnosis sir on inspection of the external nose i did not find any external deformity or any scar mark or any external deviation palpation over the sinuses shows not or reveals no tenderness the nasal pad test uh, shows there is less air flow on the left side than the right side smell test shows the less less uh, left side uh, perception of smell is a bit reduced 
on the left side than the right side. The interoscopic examination shows the left nasal cavity is narrow, is small. The right nasal cavity is, is roomy, white. Okay. And infraterminate on the right side is big, hypertrophied. And the septum is deflected to the left side with a septal spar. Posterior anoscopic examination uh, revealed normal. So, my case is septal deviation to left side with hypertrophied infraterminate on the right side. This is your complete answer in your real exam. If you do on that way, out of 20, you will get 20 marks. We usually don't, we give lots of marks nowadays. In old days, in our days, my God, to get 60% marks is, is, is just like, a, like a getting honors mark. In our days, in Dhaka Medical College, I think we only uh, five or six people or less than that, we got 60% marks. So 60%, getting 60 marks was that time is a great credit. And now your pass mark is 60%. In old days, our professor wanted to give very small marks we, with a good purpose even. But nowadays, we are giving full. You are doing very good. We are giving 80%, 90% marks. So be careful. If you go systematically, you'll get very good marks. You'll impress the, your examiner. So this is all about DNS. Now they will ask question, cross question like, OK, what are the different types of septal deviation? Uh, uh, what you want to do with this patient? We will do some operation, a septoplasty or submucous resection, uh, what is septoplasty, what is SMR, what are the complications of septal surgery. If you don't do septal deviation correction, then what will be happen? So these are all questions we'll discuss in your, uh, when we'll uh, just uh, discuss the topics on particular diseases. Uh, today's topics, I think I finished. Uh, if you summarize the examination of the nose, so don't forget, you have to introduce yourself, uh, then take permission, of the good headlight, focus the light, and always use one hand to support the patient's head. Starting from inspection of the external nose, then palpation of the sinuses, then nasal palpation test, smell test, do like that and go for internoscopy and posteroscopy, and that will close your nose examination. Uh, thank you very much indeed for listening. I think uh, today I'm going to finish this, if you have any query or anything, you can uh, put your questions or anything uh, in a comment box. Thank you very much, uh, Genesis, for giving me an opportunity to talk. Uh, and if you have any problem of listening or, you know, understanding my things, then you can tell me. Because most of the cases, I usually don't use uh, or you don't speak uh, Bengali. Uh, this is my habit from my long days. Because I usually, uh, I love talking in this way rather than, you know, PowerPoint presentation or uh, talking English and Bengali mixer. I don't like mixer. So if I just speak Bengali, I'll speak Bengali throughout the, my class. But the only problem is I am from Bogra. I usually use very local language, uh, like Bogra language. You may laugh, you may, you may not like this one. And that's why this is my style. I usually use this one. So thank you very much indeed. And thank you very much, Genesis. And thank you, the audience. Uh, if you have any query, you can just let us know. Thank you very much indeed. Have a nice night. Okay, good night. Uh, thank you very much. So we can close now, right?